Now, the movie awards season is definitely in full swing, but for those of you who fancy something a little more independent, you might want to head down to the Ritzy in Brixton tomorrow. The cinema is screening two unique short films, both about um, London, and Chris Ward, who wrote and directed both of them, um, joins me now. Thanks so much um, for joining us today. So um, tell us a little bit more about, about these films. Um, well, the first, What Should We Do With a Drunken Sailor, is uh, about um, the self-styled Queen of Bohemia, Nina Hamnet. Um, uh, her realm was the drinking dens and, um, uh, what should we say, um, pubs of Soho and Fitzrovia between the wars, the two world wars. Mm. And after, till her tragic death, um, she was um, muse, uh, model and lover of many of the great names of 20th century art. Um, uh, Modigliani, Gordia Breschka, Walter Sickert, mm -hmm. and even when she was in Paris, Picasso. So, um, uh, and the film concentrates on a rather sad time of her life, a sort of decline and fall, really, um, where she became a willing disciple to her own self-destruction and uh, uh, ended up in this netherworld of drink, drugs, virtual prostitution, where she was sort of like um, um, accosting total strangers um, reliving her former glory days and uh, for the price of a pint. It's all rather sad, but um, there's moments of optimism in it, I suppose. And what about Camberwell Beauty? Uh, Camberwell Beauty is like a post-punk parable, really. Um, uh, the band and the lead singer, Netta, who it's about, obviously, yeah, they're a punk band, but they take their name from a species of butterfly, um, which was prevalent in that area of South London. Um, and sort of like is uh, rather a rare sight these days and virtually sort of um, extinct. Um, so there's an irony in that and as Natasha says, you know, um, it couldn't live not around there. It's, um, um, it'd look all ragged and shriveled up and its wings had turned black. Well, Chris, um, let's take a look at a clip from the film. But who is she? She's with some band called the Camberwell Beauties. They're simply frightful. Every cliche in the book. I went to see them with Malcolm. I think I read something about her. Isn't she the one who had some kind of accident and came out of hospital looking... ..beautiful? <laughs> if you believe that, you believe anything. You can read between the lines. She went in for plastic surgery. The accident was just a cover-up, a publicity stunt. She's doing modelling now, believe it or not. Um, and some of you might even remember when well, no one of those um, the actresses there one of them's from Bewitched. Yeah, uh, Lindsay. Yeah, she um, gone into acting quite a bit now. Okay. So um, I was quite pleased she come down to, to actually be in something previous. And then we were, I was cast in this, and I thought, and um, we usually have uh, our old pop stars from the past making appearances. <laughs> so I was quite pleased about that. Yeah, okay, she does well, a very good job. Yeah. What, what is it like being an independent filmmaker, looking at the type of production companies you're up against, your working titles and um, the big Hollywood movies as well? I mean, can that make it very difficult to actually go out and produce your own film? Um, it is indeed, because, I mean, I, I think actually there's... Uh, is, you know, what do you class as independent cinema? Mm -hmm. People class independent cinema now as st still co-produced with Channel 4 mm -hmm. or BBC and things like that. And, of course, um, uh, we are totally independent. And that used to be a very a, bi a big thing in, in more in the 80s and the 70s. And now it's extremely, I mean, extremely difficult. Um, but that's even become the same with fringe theatre, which I was in before, and theatre in general. I mean, it's, there isn't a fringe theatre, and there isn't really an independent cinema as much as there used to be. Mm. And I'm hoping that will start to revive. I mean, how, how did you do it? How were you able to, to put these films together, to get the funding, to get the actors and actresses, people from Bewitched? Um, well, it's done on virtual nothing. I mean, but really, to be honest, I mean, it's just a very um, talented group of people who get together and are determined to um, uh, keep creating. You know, I mean, art for art's sake, I know it's sort of like a, an unpopular sort of phrase to use, or it doesn't sound good, or like it sounds like it's um, very idealistic, mm -hmm. but... Um, 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 everybody believes in the work. We've, if you believe in the script, and uh, there's very few good roles for certain for for, for, for up and coming. And, and how talent. important? How important are you know the smaller cinema chains like the Ritzy in terms of screening for filmmakers such as yourself getting your film screened? Well, it's wonderful. There still is a platform. Um, uh, those cinemas, and I think especially um, 
um, with the Ritzy and mm. the picture houses. Mm. They seem to be starting to encourage that, so I'm hoping that there'll be a new burgeoning mm. of this on the English scene and in the British scene of films. Well, listen, Chris, um, good luck tomorrow with your screenings, and thanks Thank so you. much for coming in and telling us your story. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. <laughs> okay, well, that is it from Headline London.